Hi, this is Keith Ward with Visual Studio Magazine, and joining me now is Deborah Carrada, uh, one of our speakers here this week at VS Live. Thanks for coming, Deborah. Oh, thank you for having me. Okay, can you uh, talk uh, about what sessions uh, you're doing and uh, what your expertise is? Well, today I just did a talk on Visual Studio 2012 and its many new features. Okay. Um, so uh, let's let's start right there. Um, Visual Studio 2012 is it a lot different product from the previous version? Would you consider it evolutionary or revolutionary, and why? I would consider it evolutionary. If you're used to Visual Studio 2008 or 2010, it looks very similar. It works very similar, but there are a lot of really nice new features. So talking about those features, what do you think is going to stand out if you're a typical developer? Um, what's going to excite you about the latest release of Visual Studio? It really depends on what kind of developer that you are. If you're doing modern applications, Windows 8, Windows Phone, you're going to want Visual Studio 2012 because it allows you to get templates and everything that you need to develop for those platforms. If you're maintaining legacy applications, if you're doing development in Silverlight or Windows Forms, it still provides you a lot of new tools to make you even more productive. It's more uh, performant. It gives you more uh, additional features, and we'll be talking about those, I'm sure, in the next couple of minutes. Okay. Um, so, but, but that's a question. If you are still a traditional developer, if you're writing WPF apps, um, if you are developing for desktop, if you're maintaining um, code, you know, for traditional desktop apps, is there a need to upgrade? Would you say, or, or can you can you wait a little while for the you know for the next one, or, or even the one after that? I don't think there's as much of a need as there would be a want. There are a lot of tools to aid your productivity. For example, the new Solution Explorer is alive and can be tailored to your needs to help let you focus on your code the way the new tabs are. If you're talking about Silverlight or WPF, those designers have been improved. It runs without running into crashing issues much more often in 2012. So there are some bug fixes that were done, lots of performance improvements. So there's a lot of things in there that you would like. The other thing I'd like to just mention with regard to this is Visual Studio 2012 still allows you to target different systems. So you still could target .NET 4 so if you're supporting XP platforms, you can still use Visual Studio 2012, target X, uh, target .NET 4, and still then support XP. Okay. Now, in your session today, you emphasize a, a couple of the things that, that you think are extra exciting, at least for you. So I wanted to just touch on those fairly quickly. Uh, the first one is the new Solution Explorer. You, you briefly talked about it, but go into just a little bit more depth on why developers, or why it's going to help them be more efficient or, or write better programs. Prior editions of Visual Studio, or prior versions of Visual Studio, always had a solution explorer of some type that was basically a static table of contents. The new solution explorer is much more powerful. It's much more alive and much more tailorable. It has very intricate and very full featured searching. You can scope solution explorer so it only will focus on the particular files that you want. You can do a, a, the call stack directly in Visual Studio. So there's lots of, of features of Visual Studio that really let you tailor it. You can also do two, visual, uh, two Solution Explorer windows so that you can put one on each of your two or three monitors and gives you much more control over focusing on each monitor the set of files that you want to work with. That's nice. That's one of those seemingly small sort of UI changes that will end up being big because most developers use at least two monitors. Right. Yeah. Okay, um, so let's talk a little bit now about uh, Test Explorer and what's new with that. Well, Microsoft did two big things with the new testing tools. First of all, they made testing available all the way down to the Express Edition. So now even developers using the free Express Edition still have the testing tools, and so that's fabulous. 
The other thing that Microsoft did with 2012 is they separated the testing tools from the test runner, which means that you can use the test runner with different test tools. So if you're using NUnit or XUnit or the built-in MS test, you can still use the built-in test runner, and that's amazing. Okay, great. And finally, let's talk a little bit about data and uh, the SQL Object Explorer and, and what that'll mean for divs. Microsoft inserted into Visual Studio what's called the SQL Server Data Tools, SSDT. Right. And that plugs in in a couple of different places in Visual Studio, one of which is the SQL Server Object Explorer. So it gives you basically all of the features of SQL Server Management Studio directly within Visual Studio. So you can add tables, you can edit those tables, you can edit stored procedures, Plus, you can actually build database projects directly from the SQL Server Object Explorer. So it's a very powerful window now that's available for you. All right, so overall it seems like you're saying that Microsoft has really been listening to their developers on some of these things that, that they really wanted improved. Does it seem like, like it is a response to the developer community? Yes, and with doing their quarterly updates that they're doing now, it's going to continue to improve Every quarter we're going to be getting some new features that will really help Microsoft listen to us and get those new features in. Well, that's great. Deborah, thank you very much for joining us here at VS Live. Thank you for having me.